Hey everybody and welcome to another Book Turf Tuesday. Today I only have one author for you. It's Graham Swift. I admit I cheated a little bit to have enough time to do one video about him. You probably know that he's one of my favorite authors and even though he's an award-winning author and literary science is interested in his works, I think he doesn't have enough readers. So I want to tell you a little bit about his works and his writing. Graham Swift is a contemporary British author and I first came across his work in university. I had a class on modern novels and we looked at Waterland. And I really liked Waterland so much that I wrote my final thesis about it. That was probably eight years ago now, and back then I had trouble finding secondary literature. By now that has changed. Literary science has discovered his work, and you can find a lot of articles and books about his writing, his themes, his motives, and just in general, his works. His style of writing is very consistent and prominent in all of his novels, so I think if you like his style of writing, you probably like most of his novels. I have read all of his novels, but I don't like all of them really, really well. I have favorites among them. Narration is very important for Graham Swift. He prefers the first person narrator, and his narrative is non-linear. That means he tells a story using flashbacks. He starts in the present, always jumps back in the life of his characters to tell the story. And his stories, they often have an underlying mystery to them that keeps you reading and want to know what happens. And through his narrative, this mystery is unraveled. Another important player in his novels is history. He looks at the personal history of his characters and public history. That could be the natural history, regional history, or world history in general. And he looks at how they are connected and how they influenced each other. His narrators are often ordinary middle-aged men who remember their past to understand their present. There's always a connection in his novels between the past and now. And you can almost say he's looking for the extraordinary in the ordinary in his novels. Graham Swift novels also often deal with relationships. There are generational conflicts in his stories, conflicts between fathers and sons, fathers and daughters, and there are relationships between man and woman. Many of his novels have a great love at the heart of them. I guess you can already see that there are many things you can see in Graham Swift's novels and they grow the better you know the author. So even though I don't think you have to read all of his novels to understand his writing and his novels, it doesn't hurt to read more than one. So let's look at the books. The Sweet Shop Owner is his first novel and it tells the story of the sweet shop owner who's on his last day and he remembers his life and how he got to be there. It's a really nice novel, I really liked it. Shuttercock tells the story of the police clerk and his father was a war hero. He wrote his memoirs and there is a crime there. I don't really remember this story too much, but it wasn't that captivating for me, so this is not one of my favorite novels. Learning to Swim is a collection of short stories. Waterland is a novel I recommend to read. I wrote my final thesis on this book because I loved it so much and I don't know how often I read it. It tells the story of a history teacher who tells the story of his family and his wife's family. As often in Graham Novel's books, he addresses his an audience, his class, and so we are always addressed as a reader as well. And this is just so captivating, this book, you cannot put it down. So if you want to read Graham Swift, start here. Out of this world tells the story of a father and a daughter. Their stories are told across the Atlantic. They're not in the same country and they're dealing with their past and things that happened to them. It's not one of my must-reads on Graham Swift's list as well, but it's definitely worth checking out if you want to read all of his books. Ever After tells the story of a professor who attempted suicide and thinks back on his life and reads the diaries of his grandfather, I think. This book was amazing. I loved it. Last Orders tells the story of a group of friends who travel through the country to scatter the ashes of their dead friend into the sea. It tells the story of their friendship and the relationship they have among each other. It's a very interesting book. It was also made into a movie that was not so bad. The Light of Day is one I would recommend to read as well. It's a great love story and a murder mystery and it's just captivating. I couldn't put it down and I finished it in one day. Tomorrow has a female narrator, which is not common in Graham Swift's writing. It tells the story of one night and the woman tells their children who are asleep a story of their life and they want to reveal something to the children on the next day, tomorrow. So she's afraid of what will happen and looks back at her life and why they made the decisions they made. Wish You Were Here is this latest novel. I have a full review up of this one. It tells the story of a farmer who's now the owner of a caravan park and his relationship to his wife. It's not his best, but it's definitely readable. 
those were all of the Graham Swift novels I have. I also have this one. I bought it because Amazon said it's Graham Swift. I couldn't see anywhere that it is a different Graham Swift. This novel is awful. As you can see, there's a postcard and I don't know why I keep it. I just can't throw it away, but it's full of mistakes. It's hard to read books that are full of mistakes. I don't think there was any editing done here. Very annoying. Thank you all for bearing with me about my ramblings about Graham Swift. He's really a great writer and I hope I got you interested in his works. Thank you for watching and have a very nice day. Bye bye.